Welcome back to the final video in Traceability for Food Businesses series. I'm Jamie Miller, registered SQF consultant at Kellerman Consulting. Kellerman Consulting releases weekly training videos and important tips and strategies to help companies keep up to date with the latest food safety regulations. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button at the bottom of the video screen. In the previous episode, we discussed how to conduct a traceability exercise, how trace exercises and mock recalls differ, and the importance of performing a test to both your traceability and recall systems. For the final episode of this series, we will discuss the traceability and mock recall requirements in the major GFSI schemes, SQF, BRC, FSSC 22000, and Primus GFS. GFSI is the acronym for Global Food Safety Initiative, which is a private international organization that publishes benchmarking requirements for the food safety certification programs to adopt. Since all food safety programs must have basic controls over the safety of food or food packaging produced, each of the major GFSI schemes all require super high standards for traceability programs. Facilities who are entering a certification or recertification audit must have completed mock recall exercises each year. Even if your site does not currently operate under a GFSI program, the following information will still be valuable to those facilities considering implementing a high le level safety and quality program that adheres to the strictest standards for traceability and recall tests. The most important thing to know about any traceability program and any GFSI certification program is that a facility will be required to demonstrate a completely functional traceability program during the audit. This means that a site will be required to perform a trace exercise of materials selected by the auditor. The site team performing the traceability exercise will be expected to complete the exercise within a designated time limit and the auditor will carefully review the results to verify that successful recovery of at least 98% of materials was achieved. While 98% is the acceptable limit, 100% traceability is the ideal and what companies should strive to achieve. Failure to demonstrate a functional traceability program in any GFSI audit is grounds for a major violation, and in some instances, automatic failure, failure of the audit. For this reason, it is very important that trace exercises are performed regularly and effectively. The SQF Edition 9 requirements for traceability are found in the System Elements portion of the SQF Food Safety Code Manual in Section 2.6.2. .2. This is a mandatory section. The SQF practitioner and the backup practitioner are expected to have undergone food safety training through a HACCP training course, as well as a PCQI training course for FDA-regulated facilities. These courses qualify them to oversee the traceability and mock recall exercises in the facility and to assess safety issues associated with those exercises. Along with the demonstration of full traceability during the audit, the SQF practitioner will be expected to present a standard operating procedure for traceability and annual training records of employees performing traceability exercises. The SQF practitioner will also be expected to have presented results and findings from trace exercises and mock recalls to management during required management review meetings. Per SQF requirements, sites must conduct at least one full traceability exercise during the year under review. Clause 2.6.2.1 states that the trace exercise may be performed as part of a mock recall. The SQF quality code also has a requirement for traceability in section 2.6.2. The BRC Issue 8 requirements for traceability are found in Section 3.9. This clause is starred as fundamental, which means that the site must have a fully developed program in place. Failure to have a fully developed traceability program may result in automatic failure of the BRC audit. Clause 3.11.3 .3 requires sites to conduct at least one mock recall, here referred to as a test of the recall system and should include a traceability exercise as part of the system test. Unlike SQF, BRC requirements dictate a four hour time limit to conduct a trace exercise. All other requirements mirror that of the SQF code. 
although Kellerman Consulting recommends at least two trace exercises throughout the year as part of the BRC program. We also strongly suggest considering performing at least one of those trace exercises on packaging materials, as well as a rework or recoup event where a more complex situation is tested within the program. Training requirements for a site's BRC safety lead include HACCP training, PCQI training for FDA regulated facilities, and the ability to demonstrate full control of the traceability program. The BRC safety lead may defer expertise of the inventory control program and traceability system to another member of the recall team. However, the BRC safety lead is responsible for the final assessment of the product safety and quality. This includes a demonstration of expertise and knowledge both during the audit and through assessment of the previous recall exercises for the year under review. In the FSFC 22000 program, the traceability requirements are a bit difficult to find, but they're in line with other GFSI programs mentioned in this video. The traceability requirement of the FSFC 22000 program is found in section 8.3 of the ISO 22000 Food Safety Management System Manual. Mock recall requirements are addressed in clause 8.9.5. The ISO 22000 manual simply states that a traceability program and recall program exist and that each is tested at least annually. I, along with the entire Kellerman Consulting team, always recommend that a full traceability exercise along with a separate mock recall are conducted as part of a FSSC 22000 program. We also recommend one of those two exercises is focused on rework if that is used in your facility. In operations that use rework, the requirements for FSSC 22000 are found in the TS 22002 manual clause called storage identity and traceability and require full documentation for these actions as they apply to rework. Additionally, as for all FSSC 22000 programs, the core concept of communication should be emphasized during mock recall exercises. In this program, communication takes the form of documented training for traceability and recall program requirements and the testing of communication activities during mock recalls. In the Primus GFS requirements, section 1.7.1 .1 through 1.7.3 of module one covers the traceback and recall program. These two programs are not listed separately in the Primus program. Primus GFS does require a test of the mock recall program and traceability program every six months. So these tests actually are to be conducted twice a year. Just like we see in other GFSI programs, internal audits and management review of the system tests must be performed. For all of the GFSI programs I've spoken of, our viewers must take into account that our videos do not directly address all aspects of the SQF, BRC, FSSC 22000, and Primus GFS requirements for traceability and mock recalls. If you watch our entire traceability series and adopt the practices I have described, your efforts will meet or exceed program standards. Please do not rely solely on our recommendations in this video and make sure your program references and complies with the standards from the most current versions of the GFSI code your facility follows in preparation for your audit. Thank you for watching our Traceability and Food Businesses series. If you enjoyed this video series, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel or follow us on LinkedIn to be notified of new video releases and free educational food safety resources.